Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're breaking down the management of gestational diabetes step by step based on current NICE guidelines. Be sure to watch our first two videos on this topic. I'll link them up here. So let's get into it, starting with what happens right after diagnosis. First and foremost, the woman should be referred immediately to the Antenatal Diabetes Multidisciplinary Team, or MDT. This includes an obstetrician, diabetologist, dietitian, and a diabetes specialist nurse. These experts will work together to manage both mom and baby. Next up, we've got lifestyle modifications. This is considered first-line treatment for GDM and involves a healthy diet with a low glycemic index, balanced meals, and avoiding foods with a high sugar content, and exercise with regular moderate activity, such as a 30-minute walk every day. These simple but powerful changes can have a huge impact on blood glucose control. Next up is the blood glucose monitoring, which starts immediately after diagnosis. Women are advised to check their blood sugar levels first thing in the morning, that's your fasting level, and before every meal, and one hour after each meal. A chart like the one here is usually provided to these patients to monitor their results. Now the targets we would like to achieve include a fasting level of less or equal to 5.6 millimoles per liter and a one hour post meal target of less than or equal to 7.8 millimoles per liter. The chart is reviewed in two weeks and if the targets are not met, it's time to consider medication. And that's where pharmacological management comes in. Metformin, the first line oral agent. While it's technically off-label, it's widely used in pregnancy, when the fasting glucose is under 7.0 and lifestyle modifications have failed. Insulin is used when the fasting glucose is 7 or more. In this case, we would not wait to see if lifestyle measures work, but we proceed with pharmacological management with insulin immediately. Insulin is also used if GDM complications arise, such as macrosomia, or oral treatment is contraindicated. We also opt for insulin if metformin has been used and glucose targets have not been reached after two weeks. A third option, although not as popular, is glibenclamide, which is sometimes considered when metformin is not tolerated. However, it comes the higher risk of neonatal hypoglycemia, so it's generally used with caution. Apart from the routine antenatal care, GDM patients also get regular growth scans every four weeks from 28 weeks, due to the risk of macrosomia. Now, let's talk about planning for birth. If glucose is well controlled, delivery is offered by 40 plus 6 weeks, either via induction or plan C-section. Why? Because prolonged pregnancy increases the risk of stillbirth in GDM. Early delivery is considered if there is poor glycemic control, GDM complications such as macrosomia or polyhydramnios, or other obstetric concerns like preeclampsia. Now, during labor, blood glucose should be monitored hourly. Some women will need IV insulin and dextrose, especially if they were on insulin antenatally. Lastly, postpartum care. So after birth, all GDM medications can usually be stopped. The baby's glucose should be monitored closely for hypo hypoglycemia, and the mother should get screening for type 2 diabetes with a postnatal glucose check, either a fasting test or OGTT, between 6 and 13 weeks postpartum. And an annual HbA1c, since GDM is a major risk factor. And that's a wrap on gestational diabetes. We've gone all the way from physiology to postnatal care. If you found this helpful, make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment below, especially if there's a topic you'd like me to cover next. Thanks for watching!